just sameness, there is this unity that is um, and mutuality and tension and beauty that is seen in God, in, in the creator, the sustainer, and uh, redeemer. So we celebrate that today um, with the color. <laughs> and as we step into our worship today, um, just one quick announcement. We have, um, at the top of the month, we normally celebrate communion together. And we also do a coffee hour. So I could use a little bit of help um, setting the coffee, cleaning up, and that sort of thing. So um, I'd ask uh, if you have a little bit of extra time, please lend your hand as you're able. And let us begin um, with a word of confession. We, we live in a world that is um, full of um, joy and tension, and we don't always understand each other. And sometimes that leads to... Um, misunderstandings of the state. And so it's part of our Christian worship to confess our sins, not only to God, but to one another. So I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession, which you'll see on the screen here, and you'll join me with the bold, bolded print. God of sacred and scandalous ways, we have so much still to learn. By your grace, we have come to know and love more deeply. It's a mess, it's complexity, it's stubborn and tender truths. Transform us more each day. Through fire 
waters that were fine, in valleys of death, you have guided us. Saving us from the lies of destruction, turning us towards hope that liberates. But still, O oh God, we struggle to trust you when we are afraid or hurt or weary. We betray the very one who brought us thus far. We, we confess, we still shame Jesus, even when he turns over tables. Search our hearts, O oh God, and transform the fear that lies within us. Meet us there with your good news that sets the captives free. Forgive us for the harm we have done as we seek harm no more. Beloved, God does not abandon us to that which would destroy us. God does not bind us to our regrets or forever hold us to that which we once believed. God, God says, come and follow. No forgiveness in sin, no more. Love abounds. Wherever new life is desired, may the peace of Christ be welcomed among us. Thanks be to God who leads us on paths of resurrection. Amen. Amen. All right, our opening song is Come Let Us Dream. It's number 3157 in your green hymnals. It should be in your pews if you want to look at the tune. Um, it is set to an English folk tune. So if it's new to you, just let the, the melody um, lift you along and the words speak to your soul. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome 
in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. 
And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Together let us sing, Touch the Earth Lightly. that's not equated with conformity because you can't have unity without something of relationship and you can't have relationship without generosity love and humility when conflict inevitably comes the Trinity itself represents the tension the beauty and the mystery that lies in the, in um, in the unity of it all so again unity does not mean sameness for if God wanted sameness, God would not have created the world as God created it. And if you were to take a moment to just look around the room at one another, look at your neighbor, look at your spouse, you'll notice there are differences, yes? Not only physically, but you, you know each other a little bit, some of you, <laughs> many of you. <laughs> so you know the ways that you are differently gifted the ways that you are different, even if you um, have things that connect you. And even if you're related, I'm looking at the boneses over there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that uh, Reverend Anna Sutterish, um, she's an Episcopal priest in Ohio, thinks about the good ways that we have been created. And she preached her own sermon for the Sunday, and I happened to find it online. 
Um, and she writes, our entire origin story, the creation of the universe, starts with sameness. Darkness covered the face of the deep. And it ends with rest and with a display of diversity. God allowed light to mingle with darkness. God created sky to complement the beautiful water. And God created sun and stars, two different methods to give light to the world. God allowed creatures of all kinds, of all kinds, to populate the oceans and the sky and the land. And I'll add to Anna's words, have you ever seen a goblin shark? <laughs> if you look it up, they're kind of a wild creature. Or a great patu. This is a bird with the eyes of tennis balls and this huge gaping beak and a small squat owl body. You should Google both of those animals later. <laughs> God shows off God's skills in creation. There's so much that we haven't uncovered yet or learned about creation. There's so much to learn. And our scripture this Sunday that Kathy read for us says that God created every living creature that moves of every kind and winged birds of every kind and everything that creeps of every kind. Every kind and all kinds. To humankind, God said, be fruitful and multiply, and God knew, God must have known, that to be fruitful and multiply would mean to continue and expand God's example of diversity. God knew that our children, every child born of the same parents, would be different. The trees and plants and creatures would change and evolve over eons and context and climate that all that lives and breathes might also create and explore and discover. We do not worship a God of sameness. We do worship a God of unity. But because God gave us freedom, so God allows something called conflict, something that we all love dearly, don't we? <laughs> conflict is okay. It's something that we don't recognize very often because of how uncomfortable it feels. And I'm not talking about the kind of conflict that is abuse or violence. That's what they are. It's abuse or violence. It's not the kind of healthy conflict that we engage with every day. I'm talking about the conflict that happens when you're close to the ones that you're loved and um, the, the, you're close to the people in your lives and you disagree about things like who to vote for or how to organize a meeting and execute a meeting or maybe even whether or not to put pineapple on pizza. There's all sorts of ways that we can have conflict. <laughs> and, and somehow this is a gift as well, because this is exactly where we have the opportunity to grow and to connect, to expand our beloved community, to grow in understanding, to reach for that harmony we want in relationships. <coughs> we need openness, listening, and love in the midst of conflict. And you don't often need those things unless there's difference, unless there's something new, something that sparks that curiosity in you. We need that kind of vulnerability and hopefulness that allows us to step into these places of conflict and seek relationship. So what did Jesus preach, live, and teach? Relationship. And what does the Holy Spirit move us to do? Relationship. And what does the Creator inspire over and over to us in the accounts of the divine? Relationship. <laughs> Y'all are catching on. <laughs> the Holy Trinity, three and one, one and three, creates models and exists in community just as we ought to do as followers of Christ. The goal of Christian community is unity, not sameness. And it's all too easy to have just enough religion to condemn other people, or to claim a monopoly on God, or believe in a God that only acts in the ways that we think is best. It's a lot harder to embrace the kind of faith that allows us to open up to one another, allow us to grow and to be transformed in the experience of difference that may be awkward or contain conflict. So I'll pose these questions that I asked at the beginning of my sermon. How are you like everyone else? How are you like some others, but not all others? 
And how are you completely unlike anyone else? Perhaps that's the place where we start when we're going on this task towards unity. Because God has created something beautiful out of chaos, or out of nothing, out of, out of whatever was there before the earth was formed. God created beauty, and God created you. When we are empowered by the Spirit, when we live like Jesus, there will be beauty coming forth from the ashes of our lives, of this world out of the places where there lies the most embittered conflict. We are invited to bear the image of God in the kind of community we build together. And we are given this beautiful responsibility to join the triune God in creating life and beauty out of the struggle. So in the midst of your questioning, your crafting, your self-discovery, <laughs> I pray that you look honestly at the places of connection and disconnection in your life. And I pray that in the midst of the messiness, you might catch a glimpse of the beauty that lies at the heart of it all. And hear what God says, that it is good. Amen. 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 Now we're going to sing a beloved song of our church. Um, or I like to think it's beloved. It's a beloved of mine, I should say. There's a spirit of love in this place. 3148 in your green hymnals. And if it's new to you, just keep floating along with the tune.
Judy is co-leaders with Renee uh, for our United Women in Faith group. And next week, I will be gone on an annual conference, and we are going to have a special conversation between um, a couple of United Women in Faith members and Amanda Hutchinson, who actually works for United Women in Faith. So it'll be a really interesting conversation, I think. So please come. Um, Apart from that, I'm sorry, I'm going off script a little bit with the slides. <laughs> so slide number two. Um, today, after worship, governing board is meeting to vote on a couple um, items. So we'll meet in the back room of the fellowship hall. Is that okay, Kathy? Okay. Um, there's coffee hour after worship, too. So if you want to join in the council's conversation, you're welcome to join. Um, Adult Sunday School will continue on Sundays at 9 a.m. Is that going to continue through the summer? Or at least through July. At least through July. Okay. Great. And next slide, please. Thank you for going with my um, chaotic ways. Um, and we have two celebrations of life coming up. Um, Whims. Uh, service is on Friday at the Unitarian Church, and Bob Hefty's funeral is on Saturday, June 17th. So, so the pastor that I have for the service has changed it to 4 o'clock. Oh. Okay, so note the change. It's not 3, it's 4 p.m. So 4 o'clock. It was in the Sidus News yeah. on Friday. Yesterday. Okay, all right. Well, we will send an email update about yeah. that. Okay, and one last quick. I have one too after your. Okay, you go next. I have. Okay. 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 So, uh, if you saw the newsletter, you probably saw that long article about the teacher and uh, the teacher and staff gift bags uh, for the fall, and you're like, what? Okay, school isn't even out yet. And we're talking about the gift bags. The great anyway, I just want you to know that I've already talked to Sayusla and Mapleton, and we're going to have to do 280 bags wow. this year. Wow. wow. So it's gone from like 250 to 265, and now we're at 280. So um, I just want you to be thinking about some of your contacts. Because a lot of you have lived here for a long time, and you may have somebody that you think, a, you know, a store, a business owner, uh, a community agency that might want to give to the uh, teacher and staff bags. Actually, we had about 15 uh, community partners last year. So that is awesome, and that just helps us give more to the teachers and uh, and staff. So I want you to start thinking about that, and I want you to also email me or call me so that I can go and bird dog people. All right. <laughs> Great. Uh, we have one final announcement. I want to invite Reverend Dr. Jennifer Yoakum up. Um, she is new-ish to the Florence community. She's been here for about a year, but she has not wasted any time getting involved. Perfect. So if you'll remember, about a month ago, there was um, a showing up of some neo-Nazis at the golf course to protest um, what was happening with Jason Wood's family-friendly event. And um, so Jennifer decided to act, and so she has um, found that um, it's important for us to be prepared. Um, the, the folks that came said that they'd be back again. And so she has taken it upon herself to organize people and prepare them. So I will let you say more, but thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, um, Pastor Logan. I really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, we're very grateful to have the opportunity to worship with you all this morning. I am with the United Church of Christ, and we're a sister congregation to the United Methodist. So this, that question you asked about how are we like each other and how are we just a little bit different? Well, we're just a little bit different, but there we go. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I I was at that event. My, my wife was able to attend the event that Jason put on, and a very sweet song and story. Been doing it for years, all of that. But this uh, regional group got together, and what I had heard was that they were planning to protest, and I'm all in favor of protest. You want to hold your sign, you want to say, don't go to show, whatever else, free speech is fine. That's not what they were doing. What they were doing was yelling obscenities at children. 
Yeah. What they were doing was creating a climate of bullying. What they were doing was creating a terroristic kind of sensibility about this, and it was awful. And I thought, you know, rather than just try to stand there and shout or shout or whatever, I, I thought there's got to be a more creative, positive uh, way to be present with folks. And so this workshop that I have put together is taking place next Saturday from 9 to noon over at the Presbyterian Church, because I'm trying to make the connections all over, right? Uh, it's the Presbyterian Church. You can register at the Facebook page, Fearless in Florence, O-R. Fearless in Florence, Oregon. And I think it's in your newsletter, Logan, is that right? Oh, yeah, she's got the flyer right there. Both I'm going to send an email out. Oh, thank you yeah. for sending an email out. Oh. The event itself is free. It goes, runs from 9 to noon. Registration is required in advance. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to have a good time because what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Yes. Not just for some, but for everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll send an email out um, on ways to connect with that group. So if you've always wanted to learn how to best engage with stuff like this that kind of freak you out or you don't feel prepared, this is the perfect time. Um, so This is pride in action. This is pride in action, yes. Yes, we are creators of justice and joy. All right, well, receive the benediction. Serve your God with patience and passion by deliberately enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power, and may peace be your way in the world. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is God of Grace and God of Glory. I'm going to ask you to stand for this one. We're just singing verses 1 and 4.